Hello everyone, Dr. Maiden here, more with some requested content. I had a great question that was asked in one of my previous videos about how do I find money? Okay, so quick disclaimer right away. I am not going to talk about, I'm not qualified to talk about, I don't, I don't want to talk about financial aid, okay? I am not talking in this video in terms of finding money. I'm not talking about finding financial aid. Go to your university, talk to loan people, whatever, okay? This video is focusing instead on how you find money a la travel money, scholarships, grants, fellowships, okay? How do you find that kind of money that you can apply for, that you can win, that you can earn, etc., etc. Not financial aid, all right? We're all on the same page. Okay, let's dive in then. So we break, we break out the, um, the kind of pots of money into two camps. There's internal funding and there's external funding. All right, so we're gonna address both of them uh, in this video. So internal funding is money that is available to you that you find somewhere on your campus. It is internal, it is insular to your program, your university, your department, your college, etc. Internal funding, get it on your campus. So the best advice that I can give to you when you're trying to look for internal funding is you've just got to start looking for it. You've got to look for it, ask around. One of the best resources for you in terms of finding all those weird little pots of money that hide on your campus are the other students. Make friends with other people in your cohorts, in the cohorts above you. Make friends and ask them, where's the travel money? Where's the conference money? Where's the summer funding money? I need to go to Prague to do some research. Where's that money internally? Ask other students, ask people in your department, someone like your uh, doctoral uh, dissertation advisor, someone like that, whoever's advising your program, ask them about it and then as you're just looking around things to look at especially if you're at like a big r1 institution so like that's where i was i was at the university of notre dame there is money everywhere at r1s you just have to know where to look and you have to think strategically you have to think bigger than just outside of my department your department might say yeah we give you 600 bucks a month a thousand dollar or not, not a month i'm sorry a year $600 a year for conferencing, $1,000 a year for conferencing. That's your department. You are gonna run out of that so fast, so you've gotta go elsewhere. So things to think strategically about are, okay, well, what kind of research do I do? And does it piggyback at all with other departments, other institutes, other centers? So think of something like my friend that also, yeah, they're doing pol political science, but it has a very strong religious studies bent to it. They're doing a lot with politics and religion. The religious studies pools of money can be open to them as well. Someone like me, where I'm doing a lot of work that's dealing with uh, gender, gender and conflict, I can go to something like a gender studies program. And if they have a contest, if they have a scholarship, that could work for me too. So think strategically about your work, not just where you're placed, and then start to look for money that way. Maybe your university has some type of center for ethics and your paper has an ethics bent. It has a, your, your institute has something to do with indigenous studies institute and you're doing a project that deals with indigenous studies, right? Be creative, think about your work, think about projects and angle it to all the options available on your campus, okay? That's really the best that I can say for that is you've just got to sniff it out. You've got to sniff it out. You've got to think about what you're trying to do and you've got to look for it okay ask around be pushy about it if you have to get the answers that you need and then the thing that's helpful is once you get kind of a running list of all these different scholarship opportunities start framing out a calendar and put it into a calendar as to what is this money when can i apply for it when would i expect to get it what could i be doing with it and why okay frame your calendar so that you know when you should be applying for different things. And I should be clear here too about kind of, I don't wanna say lowering, managing, managing your expectations, not lowering, manage, let's manage expectations here. When I say that there is money everywhere on a campus, 
you should not be sitting there thinking like, oh, I'll just find $10,000 under a rock, right? Some of this money could be as small as like the gender studies department does a yearly competition where the best graduate student paper wins $150. That's the money I could be talking about here, $150. But that's $150 you didn't have before. Why not apply for it? Some of them could be bigger. You could have, like in my case, there were several of the different institutes and things, the Kellogg Institute, hello Kellogg, you were awesome. They can give some big money, right? They can have their summer competitions where they're giving out $7,500 to multiple winners. Okay, so it can be bigger chunks of money that you can win, but it can also be something like $150, $500, max $1,000 is often what a lot of departments and institutes and things can offer. But it could be that they'll let you win it more than once. It could be that in your career you can win it twice. That's $2,000 you didn't have before, okay? The other thing I'll say, I kind of brought you down, right? We went down and said, oh, it's only $150. Let me bring you back up for a minute and say, apply, apply for it. You would not believe how many of these things often have a very small application pool to them. I will tell you, I worked at a university, I worked at a Scranton Fellowships office where they had the coolest, the most amazing thir um, $35,000 scholarship designed to pay for you to go and do a one-year master's program at any university you chose in the United Kingdom, okay? $35,000, one-year master's program. It's amazing, it's like unheard of. I worked at that university when we had two applicants, two, right? It's, it just bought, blew my mind. And even when I would tell, I'd be telling students left and right and center, do this, do this, do this, and no one applied for it. $35,000 just sitting there, and you had a 50-50 chance of getting it. It was just, uh, I, like, I even was telling my colleague at the time, I was like, hell, I'm gonna apply for this. I don't care, I'll see you later. I know I can beat the two applicants that we have. I'm applying, I'll say, bye husband, bye job. This is really an amazing deal, and no one's applying for it. And so I would encourage you, to stop, I think what ends up happening with these types of things is students feel like, oh, I'm not competitive for that, right? I could never compete with people for that. And what I wanna tell you is, especially when it comes to internal scholarships, you are only competing internally. So you can, in a lot of cases, kind of look around the room and see your competition and are you telling me, knowing the students and their quality of work and the people that are in your cohorts, do you really feel like you can't compete with them? You got in the program the same as they did. Of course you can compete with them. Apply for this stuff, okay? Please apply. Please make it so that a $35,000 expense paid competition for a master's program in the UK is a competitive award to win, okay? Apply. Off that soapbox. The second thing here then we'll say is external, external grants and fellowships. Weirdly, what I'll say is to start your external search, stay internal. You should have somewhere on your campus, you should have a grants and fellowships office, a scholarships office, a student, I don't know, there's a, a bunch of different titles, student opportunity office, it might be looped under the jobs and student advancement office, whatever, there will be something. If you can't find it, I would encourage you go to your Dean of Students office. Every university has a Dean of Students office. If you're struggling to find the scholarships office, go to the Dean's office and say, where is this? They'll point you in the right direction, okay? So my best piece of advice for looking external is start internal. Start on your campus, you have resources there, go to them first and say, this is what I'm looking for, this is what I want, I need to do archival research in Peru. I wanna go and do ethnographic interviewing in, I don't know, Japan, okay? Whatever you're needing done, you need to talk to your internal resource office and they will help you and refine your search as you guys look outside of the office, okay? Outside of the university. A couple of other things that you can do. There's a really great, uh, great website. I think to get the full benefits of it, you need an account. 
uh, and often I think it's in a paid account, but again, maybe it's that your internal office can get you access. There's a website called Pivot. Um, Pivot is an organization that um, they basically collate all this data for you. So all the different open grants and fellowships and things that you could apply for. They are a, a site that provides that information. So you can do advanced searches and things, put in the parameters of what's your field of study, how long do you want the grant period to be, travel, no travel, and it will give you a list, a curated list. Um, take that with a grain of salt. Some of those things, like I've done pivot searches before and I'm just like, this is, these, none of these are gonna work for me, right? And I've done pivot searches before. We're like, oh, that's interesting. You know, it goes on the list. It goes on the list of a possible opportunity. Um, the other thing too, is you can just Google, uh, Google around, snoop around. And the one, one piece of information I gave um, to the student that left a message on the previous video I did is I said, one of my other sneaky things that I have learned to do is I will follow the work of the scholars in my field that I really appreciate, uh, that I think are doing really great work that is similar to the work that I am trying to do. So you'll be coming across them in your work, you'll be reading their books, you'll be reading their articles. Check on the articles, check in the books, they should disclose if they had funding sources for their research, that can be a great place to look. So say you're, you know, it's Professor X and they did ethnographic research with village chiefs in Botswana, right? You can go to the end of their article and look and see if they announced what their funding source was. If for some reason the publication does not include that, whether it's in the book form or the journal form, Google them. Right? Do some light stalking of these people, find wherever their university website is, download their CV, peruse their CV. I have done this dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And sometimes you won't find much because what you'll notice is a lot of them get funding internally, which is what I talked about, right? The internal funding. So different institutes and colleges and, and schools at their research institutes fund their projects. Every once in a while, you will find big, big scholarships, small scholarships that are external. So that can be really useful to you. Snoop around the people that you like, that are doing the work that is similar to the work you want to be doing, and then snoop out their CVs. Snoop out the end of their articles, their books, see if they cite sources of funding, and then put those on your list, okay? I hope this is useful. If you have any other questions about both, you know, kind of the internal sides of things, external sides of things, um, let me know. Uh, comment down below. If I can finesse any of this for you, I will. But otherwise, just um, yeah, happy hunting. You just you just really have to keep your nose to the ground. You got to keep keep those ears wide open. Ask questions, and and just pay attention. Do your snooping, and you'll find money tends to be hanging from a lots of trees and hiding under lots of rocks that you would never think to look for until you start looking. Okay. All right. Have a great day.